With the dust barely settled from this week's draft, what better time to take a look at the class of 25? Our draft expert Ryan Wilson, years ahead in his preparation, already on the clock for next year's draft. The aforementioned Ryan Wilson here, and apparently after spending a week in Stanford, the guy's starting to dress out of my closet as well. You look fantastic, that I will say. Uh, Ryan Wilson, it's always good to see you, whether in person or here uh, from afar. Let's dive in here, because at the top of your draft, I got a couple questions. The team and the player both stand out to me. Take me through it. Uh, I make this clear every year around this time, Joe, uh, but, you know, people don't like to read the Internet except for the big headlines and then scroll to the part that makes them angry. This is basically much more than a mock draft. It's, it's more of a, a watch list as okay. you head into the summer and get your mind right about the college football season. But we label it mock draft, and there's certainly reasons to, to have questions as to what's going on. And perhaps the only thing uh, – Funnier than, than us dressed alike, and me a more casual Sunday by the fire, Joe Musso, is the thought of a Shadur Sanders in a Carolina Panther shoot of form as we sit here on April 28th. But, hey, that's the world we live in. It makes for fun conversation. I think the bigger story, though, Joe, is, uh, is Shadur Sanders quarterback one? Well, he certainly has a chance to be. Mm. And, I, look, I don't care about the, the Coach Prime comments and the, and the things that he gets, says on the Internet that gets people fired up. I do care about how well Shadur Sanders played last year after transferring from FCS Jackson State. And he looked every bit the first-round talent a year ago. He's a better athlete than I thought uh, I had given him credit for. Uh, he made a lot of anticipation throws. He saw the touch on the sideline throws. And uh, when we talked about him over the first month of the season on the With the First Pick podcast with uh, – our buddy Rick Spielman, we both agreed that he had a chance to be a first-round pick had he, choose, had he chosen to come out uh, in this current draft that just transpired. So I think he's going to head back. Uh, he's going to be in the conversation. We'll see what the Colorado team looks like around him. But he does have first-round talent. We saw that on display for at least the first half of the 2023 season before things sort of the wheels fell off for the buffs down the stretch. We'll get to this quarterback class of 25 a bit more in a moment, but I want to talk about one of Shooter's teammates here in Travis Hunter the two-way star from a year ago that unfortunately missed some time due to injury, but the next level talent is obviously there. Where do you have him projected right now? And where do you think his success is at the next level? Which side of the ball? That, that's the question, uh, right? And uh, we just saw Sione Divaki get drafted out of Utah, not in the first round. Uh, later in the draft, he was a safety at uh, Utah, but he's going to get drafted as a running back. So what? Uh, this is a different type of athlete we're talking here with, with Travis Hunter. Mm -hmm. And we saw him make plays on defense, and then you saw the elusivity in space when he had the ball in his hands. And, look, if he went second overall, I would not be surprised – uh, he's going to the Titans here. Also worth noting, these are reverse Super Bowl lots. This isn't my predicting how the, the season's going to play out. But the point is that the Titans need electric, electric playmakers down the field and on both sides, for that matter, in the secondary and at wide receiver. And maybe it's a situation with Hunter. You see where, he, where he's at, and, and maybe he does take snaps on both sides of the ball. It, it's rare. It does make sense that he's playing for Coach Prime, who did it back in the day. But this is a special talent. This is a first-round talent. Does he go two overall? That's sort of rich. But that's why we have these conversations in April in preparation for 350-something days from now. All right, let's put a picture to it, taking a look at 1 through 10 in this mock, don't call it a mock, mock draft. Uh, Ryan Wilson's 2025 top 10 selections, the teams, the names, they are obviously subject to change. But there you see Shadur and Travis 1-2. Notably, Coach Prime did say there's places he's not letting Shadur and Travis go play. We'll see how it all comes to pass. But what stands out here to me is the next QB you have off the board. Talk to me about Carson Beck. I mean, you said Shadur could be QB1. If not Shadur, Carson Beck, through some play this season, could state claim to that as well. Right, and he, he will not be going to the Denver Broncos unless something goes horribly wrong. But he does have a chance to be a top-10 pick. And, and you're right. So he followed Stetson Bennett, and it was unsure what that Georgia offense was going to look like at the quarterback position. And all he did was outplay, in terms of athleticism, what we saw from Stetson Bennett. Now, Stetson Bennett had a fantastic career. But in terms of uh, pocket presence, in terms of the, the height, weight, uh, he's a good athlete in space, and the arm strength, all those things check the boxes. And uh, had he come out, Joe, he would have probably been a top 75 pick. We didn't get too far down that road because we didn't need to, NFL teams included. Uh, but he's, there's going to be some expectations for him as he heads into to next season. By the way, worth noting, last year in this very same conversation we had at 16, I had the Broncos, in fact, taking Bo Nix, to which Danny Cannell replied at the time, if that happens, he'll never shave again. Uh, Danny Cannell owes us some facial hair. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, vowed to never shave again, I believe, with the terms of that deal. It's going to take a long time to hold him to it, but uh, 
here's to hope. And Ryan Wilson, <laughs> let's take a look at another group of players here from 11 and on. And again, for me, it's quarterbacks that are really shining here. And we're going to take a look at Quinn Ewers, who is set to lead Texas, but we saw the numbers in the spring game from Arch Manning. You know, he's willing to sit and wait, but if a situation arises in which Manning gets his opportunity this year, Ewers could be a different type of prospect moving forward. What excites you most about Quinn Ewers, who you currently have mocked just by happenstance to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 12? And that makes sense at Tampa Bay. We'll, we'll see what happens. But, um, Baker Mayfield long term, of course. And, and what makes me most excited, Joe, is that hopefully Quinn Ewers plays every single game and we're not having the Arch Manning conversations like we did about Johnny Manziel and Tim Tebow back in the day. Uh, again, uh, I watched a lot of the quarterbacks because we thought some of them would come out, and Quinn Ewers is throwing to Xavier Worthy here, who is now going to take his wares and speed to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Quinn Ewers is he got better. He dropped about 15 pounds heading into the last season. He showed a little athleticism. You see that here. Uh, he has a strong arm, and, and in fact, it's better in person than it does look like on tape at times. Uh, there's A.D. Mitchell, who is now headed to the Colts. So he was thrown to a bunch of dudes. That said, I, I think he had a lot to do with that success of that offense, even though it was a balanced offense in terms of run pass and, and the offensive line play as well. But, again, he'll come back. There'll be some pressure because of, of Mr. Manning sitting behind him. But I think he's up to it. And if he plays well, there's always a need for quarterbacks, Joe. And if he has a good season, he's going to go in the top 32. Then the question becomes, how high does it go after we get to that point? You also had Miami quarterback Cam Ward at nine. So, again, a handful of quarterbacks going early in in this draft we saw it whether it's an overdraft a place of need or actual value that is where the play and the performance tell uh, through time let's move on through this pseudo mock I, I don't know what to call it here Ryan I, what do you want me to call it you can call it a mock That's I can fine. call it a mock I'm gonna call it a mock yeah 21 Calvin Banks junior 22 Denver Harris cornerback Landon Jackson your edge at 23 and again a quarterback here at 25 Jalen Milrow what does he have to do this season to really state himself as a first-round talent? Or do you believe that, much like some of these other names, if he were to have come out and been a part of this class, he also would have been first-round already? No, he would not have been, mm -hmm. and that's an important distinction. And this is also a, a setup for one of these old takes exposed situations because I actually <laughs> commented uh, during the Alabama-Michigan playoff game that maybe the best quarterback on the field 10 years from now is playing for Alabama. We'll see how that goes. I like J.J. McCarthy, but Jalen Milrow, sweet mercy in space. Good luck with that. He got better as a passer as the season progressed. The first half of the season, he was struggling to the point they had to bench him. Bounced back nicely. He's a leader on that team. We heard Terran Arnold talk about his leadership qualities. And the other thing, Keep in mind, Joe, uh, who was the coach at Washington for, for Mr. Penix? Kellen DeBoer. Mm -hmm. Kellen DeBoer is now at Alabama, and he is the offense is going to be an, a pro-style offense, and if Jalen can have success in that offense, that translates to the next level. That'll be an easier evaluation for, for media folks and NFL folks alike, and I think the athleticism, arm strength, and the intangibles that we like to talk about, Jalen Milrow could be a really interesting prospect if Alabama maintains what they've done uh, now that Nick Saban is in the retirement. All right, let's take a look at the tail end of this round one of the 2025 draft. And I'm interested in this one because I want to know who you got. Oh, wait, no, this this can't be right. 32 overall at San Francisco. I was I was thinking you'd have my Bears there picking 32nd overall. But I died yeah. for that. Nah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But that's what this is all about. It's a 2025 Mac. We are officially ahead of ourselves here. But taking a look at these six names, Ryan, who do you want to highlight? Who stands out to you of this tail end of the pack that's going to go to a very talented team already? I'm glad you brought up your Bears, but it's, again, uh, an important <laughs> distinction. These are reverse to rule laws, as by our guys at Sportsline. Mm -hmm. So this is not me guessing what's going to happen. But Judkins there at, at the, the running back who transferred from Ole Miss to Ohio State is an interesting prospect. We know how the running back situation goes in the first round. Uh, but Trevion Henderson was at Ohio State. He returned, so that – that uh, tandem in that backfield for the Buckeyes is going to be special. I mentioned Jack Sawyer as well, his teammate, the edge rusher. We thought maybe he might come out back back in the fall. He returned. He and his teammate, J JT Tumaloa, who went a little higher in this uh, mock draft slash whatever we're calling it. They're going to have two edges that are going to get after it uh, in the Big Ten, and both those guys can end up also being first-round picks. Ryan Wilson doing the work well in advance, dressed for success as well. Go, go change. I'm uncomfortable. Thank you, Ryan. You can get all the latest on the draft front each and every week on the With the First Pick podcast. Just spent the weekend with these guys, and nobody knows the prospects better. Ryan Wilson, Rick Spielman, the work has already begun for 2025. Download, subscribe, and enjoy With the First Pick.